Well, of course, uh, a studio film that you made, your directorial uh, cinema debut anyway, was uh, Street Fighter. Now, uh, at the time it came out, it didn't get the greatest reviews in the world, but now in 2019, people love Street Fighter. So uh, what's that like knowing that you've been proven right all along? Uh, well, I've been proven right a couple of times. I know when we did Commando, um, it got scathing reviews, but both Arnold and I were pretty certain that it would, in the long run, it would have a good, it would have a reputation, which it does now. People like it, and Rambo is no, no, no Rambo is a joke. Uh, and I think that with both of these movies, uh, both of these movies were aware they were basically comedies. They did not take themselves seriously. I remember at the time that Street Fighter came out. Um, now, Street Fighter, of course, had a a um, uh, a, a um, problem when it's coming out because the Japanese wanted to get a, an American star. And when they went, I mean, he's Belgian, but to them, you know. Uh, so the first thing I said, well, you know, he's, his accent is going to be strange for an American. And they go, what accent? Because they hear him, a Japanese actor dubs Van Damme. So they, you know, what they, what foreign countries do is they try and have the same actor dub everybody. So like the same actor dubs dubs uh, Bruce Willis in France. One guy has done all his movies, so he always sounds the same. Uh, in Japan, Toshiro Mufuni, who was the 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 star of all of uh, uh, those uh, Japanese picture, he dubbed John Wayne. All of John Wayne's movies were dubbed. So there's consistency there. So they just didn't understand that that John Claude had an accent. And also, they wanted a PG-13 movie because they wanted to sell toys. And it said Van Damme's audience is expecting an R. So there was a cognitive dissonance in this movie, which was advertised as kind of like a Van Damme movie, except it was kind of soft because it was going to sell toys. Uh, how was it working with uh, Van Damme at the time? Because we've all, well, he himself had said yeah. that he was going through some shit. Yeah. Uh, and you hear these stuff where... <laughs> Where in previous films where he's demanded a nude scene where he gets to show off his, his arse or his ass, shall I say? Uh, no, he, he, didn't, he, he did not ask for a nude scene uh, in our picture. Um, so, um, anyway, my point was that uh, I remember at the time that Street Fighter came out, there were some reviews that said, this movie is so stupid, it's accidentally funny. So how you could look at that movie and see some of the things that are said and that are set up and staged and think they're accidentally funny. You know, like, uh, you got paid, you know, or, or uh, quick, quick change channel. channel. <laughs> yes. so, yeah. Or even when Van Damme, like, is, is it, when Van Damme sneaks into the uh, enemy headquarters uh, and he suddenly open, goes through a doorway and there's, like, you know, 85 guys with guns. And he's, like, he just takes out a knife and they back up, you know, and he goes, you know, he doesn't realize his army has, has appeared behind him. So, anyway, it was... Uh, Liberty funny. The, the biggest problem on that film was, um, the first problem was they insisted on putting all their characters in. When I first got the job, I said, I said to the Japanese in translation, I said, name the seven dwarfs. Nobody could. Name the seven wonders. Nobody could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I said, name the seven deadly sins. Nobody could remember all seven. I said, human beings are sort of hardwired to sort of without without scratch paper, you sort of lose lose track after seven. And my point was, you have you have eighteen, you have nineteen characters. They can't all do the math. There's a hundred minutes in the movie. The movie's going to be a hundred minutes long, maybe hundred and ten minutes long, with twenty characters. They're going to go by in the blink of an eye. So they said, okay, okay, we get that. Fine, fine. So I started out with my first draft. With I think about nine characters, you know, split between the good guys and the bad guys. But each time I would turn a draft in, or each time we would do the budget of the movie and we discover we were short, they would say, "All right, we'll give you a little more money, but add another character." It was like a, a very kind of you know the Japanese never say never say no. They said yes. Well, you know, there's an old saying. So it was a kind of a Japanese negotiation. So uh, even even after the movie started, they added characters. So um, that was problematic is that you you think it's a John claude Van Damme movie, but there's not a lot of John claude Van Damme in it, you know, compared to what you think you're getting. Uh, and also the uh, picture, you know, not being as rough as uh, one of his pictures uh, would be. Uh, so uh, 
my biggest problem on the film was um, they uh, we had a hard release date. Uh, they they knew the date the movie was coming out before we even started, and um, the production company made a deal with a uh, subcontractor, a production company in Thailand. So they bring me the schedule, and they say, "Here's the schedule for the movie. It's a ten week schedule. We're gonna s film. Um, we're gonna film uh, six weeks in Thailand and four weeks at a studio in Australia." Now, I this is I had started out in television and I worked my way up starting out on the six million dollar man and I worked my way up from a story editor on that show which is the lowest producing job to executive producer of, of Knight Rider before I jumped into feature films so when I was a producer of Knight Rider um, I was responsible for about 35 million dollars to make uh, make you know 22 Knight Riders they cost like a million one each at that time so I know how to like you know, I'm, I like to think I'm a creative sort, but I know how to read a budget. I know how to schedule a show. Otherwise, you know, it's, 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 it's like uh, that's a whole different skill set. But I have it because I never would have become a television producer if I wasn't good at it. So I looked at the schedule right away and said, this is crazy. I, I wrote this script knowing I'm going to direct it, giving myself a break. And in my mind, when I wrote this script, it was like seven weeks on a soundstage and three weeks on location. Why are we doing this? And they said, well, the, the labor is so cheap uh, in um, Bangkok that you're going to get more production value. And we're only going to do the most difficult, difficult stuff with the most complicated sets like Bison's big command room and stuff. So we start filming in um, uh, Bangkok. And like from day one, things go wrong. So, for example, there's a location there. It was a wonderful location, which is supposed to be the uh, the headquarters of the uh, Allied Nations. By the way, the reason it's not the United Nations is some idiot on the company asked the United Nations for permission to show them in the movie. So they said no, whereas you don't need the permission to show them in a movie. You know what I mean? So we had to call it the AN. And, but nobody noticed. Every review said the United Nations. Even though all the signage says Allied Nations, they had the blue helmets. We did the logo the same way. Anyway, there's a big building. It's a famous scene that is beautifully parodied. Somebody put it on on YouTube with subtitles. It's it's Van Damme's speech to the troops. Yeah, it's a famous clip. He gives his very earnest speech. My fellow troopers, you've seen that clip. Oh yeah. There's also one with subtitles. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and they say I'm going to kick that bison so hard. H o r d. You know. All right, so anyway, that building is a great building. That building was a, uh, a Coast Guard command center on the river that had been uh, abandoned because they built a new headquarters. So it worked just for right for us. So they said to us, this is great because the big building, the big room inside that was the covered hangar for the Coast Guard boats, right? It's like, a, like almost like a submarine pen, right? That will be your main studio. You just shut the, shut the gates that go out to the river, and you can build your sets in there. So we go in there, and there's holes in the walls that light comes through. So when you would try and like you know control the lighting, it's like bullet holes in a movie when it's really cool, like your hero almost gets killed, and the bullet holes are there, and the light beams come in. You know what I mean? You see, but this was oh, yeah. we didn't want that. It had a tin roof. And it was the rainy season, and when it rained, it was, you know, like, so we were almost, we were like, so we were, we were after two weeks in Thailand, we were like 10 days behind schedule. Uh, and uh, also the producer, uh, the line producer there was, uh, uh, was like sort of unavailable a lot. It turned out he was actually, uh, thought he had, he thought he had some kind of, um, he thought he was coming down with something, and actually, he he was actually having a slow a slow burning heart attack. So he was oh, sort of shit. like you know it was it, he it was sort of creeping up on him. He was lucky. Uh, so then we had to change a new and the new producer comes in and says, "You got to get out of Thailand. This is crazy." Because the whole time I was saying, "This schedule's crazy, Stephen. You've never directed a movie before." And I go, "I produced uh, over a hundred hours of te television. I've directed." Tales from the Crypt, which is like a very difficult show, 
special effect. You know, I know what I'm. So if Adi, the new producer, comes in and goes, "This guy was right. We're going to Australia right now." So we went to Australia earlier after after uh, three weeks instead of after six weeks, and then we had to reshoot almost everything we had done in Bangkok. But we could not move the date of the release of the movie. So now it was a mad rush to get 10 weeks of movie done in seven weeks. It's a brutal schedule. And um, uh, John Claude, I guess maybe because, you know, he's a well-established star. And um, we had some, especially in, in Bangkok, some um, inexperienced people. Um, you know, who, uh, who, so he would say, uh, I want to go to Hong Kong for the weekend. Uh, Planet Hollywood is up. Fine, go. But you uh, have to be very careful about releasing somebody in case they don't come back. So he would leave Bangkok. He left twice to go to Hong Kong and somehow missed his flight back. So Monday morning, he wasn't there. So now what are we going to do? So I have to go, all right, um, I guess we'll do something else that wasn't scheduled for today. So now you're scrambling because now maybe those actors are sleeping late or yeah. that set hasn't been painted yet. You know, so it was it was uh, it was uh, very disorganized. Uh, and uh, uh, it was frustrating to me because the presumption is when you're the writer or director, you've got everything organized, you know. But um, you know, it, it, I was not able to do it. My biggest the biggest problem, though, was. Uh, when we started the movie out, we said, all right, what are we going to do here? Are we going to get martial artists and then hope they can act or get actors and train them to do martial art? So once we had Van Damme, that limited our budget. We had Van Damme and Raul Julia. They were, they, they were into star fucking. Can I say that on your radio show? On oh, your radio show, on your, on your podcast. <laughs> I'm dating myself and calling it radio. Um, so uh, that left very little money for the rest of the cast, which is why everybody else was a, a, a rising star with most cases, except for Wes Studi. Uh, most of the other actors were like people were just breaking in, uh, which is fine. It's mostly a young cast. Uh, so we so after some discussion, we said, you know what? The way they fight in this movie from the video game is so unnatural. It bears like no resemblance to any actual real martial arts. I mean, with most, you know, in most circumstances, it's very wacky. Since it's so strange anyway, we, it, you know, the martial artists won't know it. We're going to have to teach them to do these wacky flips and tricks. So let's go with actors. So we cast the best actors we could find and afford for the picture. And we said, here's the plan. We're going to go to start the movie and we will front load all the dialogue scenes. And while we were shooting the dialogue scenes with actors A, B, C, and D, actors E, F, G, and H will be at the gym working with the stunt crew, learning the stunts. So after three or four weeks of people, actors talking, then we'll get to some of the stunts. And we'll keep this process going all the time. That was the plan. Um, my costume a wardrobe designer, Marilyn Vance, an Academy Award winning wardrobe designer, uh, she went on. She uh, was on a flight ahead of me to Australia, so I was waiting for um, a transfer. I guess where I was. I was in one airport waiting to go to the other airport, or I was at the airport waiting to go to the studio in Australia because Ra Julia did not work in 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 in, in, in Bangkok. He only worked. In, um, so um, I said, "We have a problem. What is it?" He says, you, "You'll see when you get here." So I go there and she says, he's lost a tremendous amount of weight since I first measured him months ago. So it turned out we know now that he had recently had a cancer operation. He had mm -hmm. been in the hospital recently and he looked ghastly. And I said, oh my, and he said, I'm going to have to pad his costume out. And I go, I said, I cannot photograph this guy like on Tuesday. So I said, we got to change the schedule. So I changed the whole schedule. I pushed all of his work to the end of the movie. All of his work to the end of the 10 week schedule, which, which w I guess would have been then he was working like the original plan four weeks. He's going to last work the last month of the movie, the last three, maybe the last three weeks and give him milkshakes, give him donuts. And, you know, uh, 
you know, get him. And he, he said he recently had it. He said he'd gotten an intestinal virus. He lied. They lied to everybody. They said he got an intestinal virus working on a movie in um, uh, in South America where he played a, 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 a historical character, uh, a, a bishop who was fighting for indigenous rights. Um, and um, I, I was unable because of the, the, the schedule. There was one day of work I could not push back because of other because the set being built, this, that, and the other thing. So the scene where he goes down to the laboratory and he sees Dalsim and says, "How's our experiments going, Doctor Dalsim?" That was that was uh, I had to film that early. He looks a little bit gaunt there, so I mm -hmm. that I had to film that. But then he did not work for a couple of weeks. But now, what am I going to film if I'm not filming all the dialogue scenes up front with Raul Julia? Now I had to throw the actors into these fight scenes, and they hadn't been properly trained. So uh, I was in a strange situation where. You're expecting some, you know, hand-to-hand -hand fighting in this movie, but a lot of it was a little sloppy because they did not have the time to train. At the end of the at the end of the day, we assembled, put the movie together. We uh, ended up doing a week of reshoots uh, when we got back to back to America, um, where we uh, uh, amped up some of the we we reshot uh, some of the material, particularly the fight at the uh, particularly the fight at the end of the movie uh, in the with um, Ken and Ryu. Uh, versus um, uh, Zagat and uh, Vega. Uh, that was filmed like the last week of the movie. And that's a, a pretty well choreographed fight. And you can see the guy, their skill level is up. And also the fight between Van Damme and Raul Julia was like the last days of filming um, uh, on the original shoot. And that's pretty well done. But a lot of the stuff before that is, is a little bit sketchy. I mean, um, the scene when... Um, uh, when um, uh, when uh, Balrog and uh, Honda are, uh, escape their prison cell, and the other, when uh, Ken and Ryan break them in, uh, that was a day that Van Damme like, didn't, missed his flight. And there was supposed to have been, that scene was supposed to have been filmed about a week or so later, and there was supposed to be uh, a great little fight in that prison cell, like a claustrophobic fight between mm -hmm. these guys and some guards. You know, like inspired by, I guess, like the James Bond fight on the train, or... Um, uh, in, in from Russia with Love, or the great fight in the elevator in in, uh, in Captain America: Civil War, uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's a whole thing to have a fight in a confined area. It's a it's a challenge. So we but we hadn't had time to rehearse it or practice it. So the the two guys just punched the guy in the in the, in the in the in the aisle. I mean, in the, in the corridor. It's like a joke. The guy turns around and he gets two. You know. So we had to make these these compromises on the action all along. It was very it was um, it was very frustrating. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, it, it's a miracle that we, you know, got the movie to come out and, uh, look as well as it did and to now have this reputation now where people love it. I was at a film festival, uh, in Spain, um, in January, uh, it was a, it's a, a genre film festival. Um, and, uh, there's been a couple of these 30th anniversary screenings that I've been to and people go crazy for it. And a lot of people come up to me and say, I love it. And what it is, is there's a whole, um. I guess it's uh, not. I guess it's a Generation uh, X. It's, it's a, no, it's not. It, no, it's, it's Generation X, not Millennials. There's a whole bunch of people. This was the first action movie they saw. Like their parents. Oh, and I'll let you. I'll let you see this one. It's PG-13. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of people in their mid 30s. This is one of their favorite pictures because it was the child. It was their. It was the picture that it was their first grown-up movie. 